Habituation is diminishing the reactions to a repeated stimulus. Let me give an example to explain. If you moved into a new neighborhood near the airport, you would constantly hear the airplanes flying overhead, and that might be annoying at first. But over time, your nervous system would react less to the airplanes to the point where you practically ignore them. The same can happen with signals like tinnitus or ringing in the ears. The more you hear it and label it as negative, the more you'll react to it in a negative way. These reactions become harder to diminish until we distract the brain away from the signals. So habituation is helping to block the reactions to a signal like tinnitus so that we can block the perception of it in the long run. It's more than just learning to ignore a signal, however. Habituation is rewiring or retraining the brain to not have a response. So like those airplanes, if you have the TV on in the background, you don't hear the airplanes as much. And over time, you can block the perception of the planes or the tinnitus much easier. Hope this helps. My advice would be for people living with tinnitus to avoid silence. When you're in a quiet room, the brain directly focuses on that signal and can amplify it. So the best advice is to use low-level sounds in the background and be in a sound-rich environment. Have some instrumental music on in the background, a waterfall, water feature, some type of sound that's calming and soothing. It can be low-level in the background. It doesn't need to be loud, but we're trying to distract the brain away from the tinnitus. Other things you can do is stay busy get involved in a hobby, or um, if you're working, a lot of people will report they don't hear their tinnitus as much, but when you're trying to relax, calm down after a long day, you still need that sound-rich environment so your brain doesn't go back to focusing on the tinnitus. Tinnitus can switch between right and left ears, for instance, because our perception just varies based on what's going on in our auditory system. For some people, it might be because of increased pressure behind the eardrum, such as eustachian tube dysfunction, that can create this changing between the ears. My left ear is my dominant tinnitus ear, but when pressure increases, say a storm's coming in and the barometric pressure drops, I can perceive tinnitus in my right ear. But day to day, I perceive it more in the left because I have more underlying damage to the inner ear in my left ear. So there's a lot of variables that are in control here about our perception. And really what we're dealing with is unstable auditory neurons that can do unpredictable things. So it's very common to have patients report that tinnitus switches between ears. That's normal. And with some diagnostic tests, we can usually pinpoint why you might have that perception. Great question. You can prevent tinnitus from getting worse without overprotecting your ears by understanding some basics about sound level and the dose before damage. So we know if you listen to a sound that's 85 decibels loud, you have about eight hours before damage. Loud speech is about 80 dB. So you can gauge this with either a sound level meter on your smartphone. That's a great way to kind of gauge what are the volume levels that I'm listening to. And then if you keep increasing the volume, know that your duration of time is gonna be cut in half. So with 88 decibels of sound, you only have four hours before damage takes place. And every three decibel increase cuts that time in half. So filtered earplugs. Custom filtered earplugs are the best. That's what I wear when I'm in a loud environment. Um, they're small, they're comfortable, they fit in the ear. So filtered earplugs are awesome because you can hear the full signal without it being a damaging level. Uh, standard foam earplugs will work too. However, a lot of times people do not insert those properly and so they're getting leakage around the earplug, which isn't fully protecting them. Uh, but you do not want to wear earplugs in common everyday situations like riding in the car, going to the grocery store. If you overprotect your ears, you'll only amplify the tinnitus and possibly create some sound hypersensitivity, which doesn't help any of these symptoms. So you want to protect your ears when it's above 85 decibels uh, for any extended length of time. And the louder it is, the shorter the amount of time before damage will occur. So really getting a, a decibel chart is a great way to kind of reference when you need hearing protection. 
and for how long you can be exposed before damage could occur. So that's what I would recommend for anyone living with tinnitus. Please like and subscribe for more content like this.